Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good evening. Good afternoon. From each part of the world, it's great to see you. All. Okay. Okay. I see people joining in. That's really amazing. Hello. Hi, everyone. It's glad to have you on board. I see Anna, I see Adan, I see Sia and I see Sin. It's really amazing to have you online. Hey. So, we'll wait for a couple of more minutes and then we'll start the insta live session really thank you for joining in if you can write your location from where you are joining in it would be so amazing so hi i'm from india and i'm i work with elp as a summer intern so i'll be the moderator for today yes even i'm excited Oh, Poland, Portland, Oregon, yes, yes. So amazing to have you on board. Okay. I see people from India joining in as well and uh, we have Zintia has joined in. Awesome. I think I'll go with that switch. Hi. Good evening. Good morning. How are you? Yeah. Good evening here and good morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Great. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty, pretty fine. Pretty good. What about you? <laughs> uh, I just woke up, so uh, like a couple of hours back. It's I, it's eight thirty in the morning, so I'm just starting my day, and it's good to start my day with you uh, <laughs> doing this session. So it's really amazing. Um, how how has your day been? Like it's evening. I see it's evening over there. So yeah, it's evening like eight p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. club, I, I'm in California, so it's Pacific time here. And um, yeah, I think in Mexico, well, in Mexico City, it's like um, two hours ahead, so it's like 10 p.m. So it's kind of kind of late there, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, it was hard like to try to um, arrange the time for you and me in different. Time zones. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's so amazing to be working with such a diverse team, and uh, yeah. where we have like actually ELP is awake every hour. If you see like uh, when it's evening for you, some of the team members are up. Uh, when it's morning for me, some of the team members are up. So it's really like amazing that uh, we have people who are active uh, from ELP at every hour. Yeah, it's very interesting because uh, half of the team are in uh, in the American continent and the other half is in the other, well, in another continent at like Europe and uh, Asia with you. And so we are like in different places working yeah. together. <laughs> okay, great. I see more people joining in. Uh, hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Hello. Uh, Thank you for you coming. Yeah, really thank you for joining in. It, it It's amazing. I think last time there was some technical glitch and we couldn't uh, host the event. And I see people coming in. That's that's really amazing. Yeah. The other the other day we, we have some troubles, but we use that time to get to know 
better each other, me and Hercules. So it was really nice to talk about um, India and Mexico and the culture and our cultures. <laughs> so for the audience, no, it's really like Zintia and I found out there are a lot of cultural similarities between um, India or let's say uh, to the central India part, the communities, Adivasis or indigenous people of India and uh, the people at Mexico. So it's really amazing to learn that uh, the culture which exists in, um, the, which is there in India, similar culture exists or uh, sim there are, the culture over Mexico is also similar. I hope, uh, I, I assume that's true for all, like all over the world. Uh, cultural have these similarities uh, even irrespective of their ge geographical location. Yeah, like today we were talking about like the numer numeral systems in different uh, languages and the, the 20 base in, in different languages in, in the world. So yeah, it's kind of um, interesting similarities, but we are like humans and the culture is really amazing. Yeah, yeah great. Uh, I see more people joining in. Hi everyone. Uh, it would be amazing if you can uh, comment your from where you're joining in and just say hi to everyone. So to introduce, I'm Hercules from India and uh, I am joined by Zintia who is natively from Mexico but uh, currently staying in US. Yeah. So yeah, well, well, yeah, I'm I'm here because I'm doing well. I, well, yeah, I started doing my PhD last year, but uh, online. So now I'm here uh, waiting for. Well, I don't know. Maybe I hope we can um, have this semester in person, mm -hmm. but I don't know. And um, thank you, Anna. Hi. Hey, hi. I hi from Houston. Hi. Yeah, he's my cousin, so thank you so much for the support. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it said hi, it said thank you for joining me. <laughs> awesome. Hello to Brian from Oregon. <laughs> Brian Picks, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. I was born nice. in Oaxala, but I live in Oaxala. Oaxaca. Oaxaca is one of, well, Oaxaca is a very interesting, interesting um, place in Mexico because there are a lot of indigenous people and cultures there in that state of Mexico. So wow. it's really interesting. Yes. In fact, uh, one of the, well, mystic language is, uh, our own culture are in Oaxaca, Puebla, and Guerrero, so three states. Uh, showing the same uh, um, cultural region. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice. Uh, we'll be starting the event in a couple of more minutes. Let's say we'll wait for uh, four more minutes and then we'll be starting uh, our event. Meanwhile, uh, feel free to drop your location and say hi to Zintia and me. You can also say in your own language and drop the name of your language. It would be really amazing to learn about new languages. So, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I see more people joining in. Yeah, joining in, joining, uh, dropping out. No problem. Yeah, it's because it's kind of like they're in Mexico and <laughs> in other places. Too. Okay. And very, I'm very early in the morning in India <laughs> and that part of the, the world. No, uh, so uh, generally in India, uh, people have this tendency to wake up pretty early, like even before the sunrise. And uh, although I'm not an early morning person and uh, <laughs> my timing, so I think it perfectly fits my this, like uh, my general routine. Oh, I see a Spanish mm. speaker. And Mandarin, uh, wow. How do you, can you say hello in Spanish and Mandarin? It would be amazing. <laughs> All I know about is like in Mandarin, they say ni hao, right? 
No, I think they say ni, ni hao. Oh, well, I don't know about um, counting. Hola. 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 Yes. In fact, in India, we have a very big uh, uh, car, like a company named as Ola. Ola. Hey, hola. Hello. Me how? Yeah. Me how? Yes. Me how? <laughs> ah. Nice. Zapoteco. Oh. Ayokesco. I lo- I like to see different languages because like we are, we we live in a multicultural and multilinguistic world and it's nice to have like different like people who be bilingual or multilingual and it's really nice <laughs> and also, it's very interesting like to well for me language revitalization is very important and meaningful so I appreciate everyone who is Well, who is trying to learn like their heritage uh, language that we have talked about in the in the in the morning you you and me Hercules <laughs> yeah. uh, even I, I I have a huge respect and I really appreciate uh, people who are learning m- more number of language so huge shout out to pine pricks and then land back by and all others who are there in the audience and who are learn, trying to learn uh, more than one language really appreciate you a uh, huge shout out to you guys and keep doing what you're doing you're doing really amazing work and, yeah uh, uh, in case like I'll, i'll i'll be very happy to talk to you uh, in person if i see comments people want to talk in person i'll be really happy to talk and learn about your language and maybe i'll i'll share a bit about my language which is mundari now uh, it would be really amazing so feel free to drop by a message to me or zentia okay okay uh, so should we start in yep okay so well uh, maybe i can introduce myself with some <laughs> So uh, let me let me take over that. Uh, hi everyone. Oh. Oh, hello, Ola, Glutenberg, uh, Ni Hao, Johar, uh, and uh, yeah. For uh, thank you for everyone to join in and uh, uh, really appreciate that we missed it last last time. But again, you have showed your support and here we are. So for today's living lang uh, for today's language champion live, we have Zintia. Uh, who is natively from Mexico and currently pursuing her PhD in UC Berkeley. Uh, so I'll, uh, now, Zintia, I'll request you to introduce yourself about your cultural background and uh, then we'll take it from there. Mm, okay, so um, I'm going to start with uh, introduce myself in Mixtec, so Cunevancia. Yo una ni Cintia Montaño, eh yo ando en México, New Delhi, eh New Coyo, Tacuay, Landavi, de linguistics. Eh uh, Codina, Casay. Eh uh, which means like um good evening uh, everybody. My name is Cintia Montaño. Um, so I'm from Mexico, uh, from Mexico region and also Mexico City. Uh, I'm learning Landavi and also I'm studying linguistics and I like to dance. Oh, so well, yeah. yeah oh you continue please oh well about my background mm, well um like my professional background has started like um, i don't know like four, four years ago because i i did, i did a masters in um like um, like um, by cultural um, no, by 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 bilingual education and Amer- Indian studies which is like um indigenous language of mexico and i did like the linguistic uh, branch of this master so i i i did a, a thesis about uh, um 
the, the, the community, in the transnational community from Puebla in Mexico and New York he, uh, here in the USA. So, but yeah, that, that, that was, uh, that was uh, the beginning of my journey to linguistics. And then I want to start it from, uh, I want to start it with language, like uh, recording, uh, which is like documenting the language for making uh, material for learning and everything. So that's why I'm moving to the USA doing uh, my PhD because I, I think like here, especially in Berkeley, they have been doing a lot of interesting work with indigenous language and revitalization, which is like my main purpose. Um, and yeah, do you want to ask something more? Uh, yeah, I, I think we're good. Thank you for that lovely introduction. And we'll be talking more about your documenting process and how, how you got uh, into your culture and started to work as a linguist. So uh, my next question would be, uh, could you also tell about what is the current language situation in your community, uh, about mm, the mystic region, and uh, uh, how is it in general? Is it a multilingual community? How is the culture? Uh, maybe talk about a bit of language diversity. Yeah, well, maybe I could, I can start it with, uh, I can start with the situation like in Mexico a little bit and then, well, um, in Mexico, there are uh, this, uh, like 11 uh, linguistic families. One of them are like uh, Otomangan, which is like a, a big family where, which um, Mixtec uh, belongs to. So, Mixtec is also like a pretty, we, I can, I call Mixtec a macro language because there is not like a unique one language. There is no like the Mixtec. It's like different varieties of Mixtec. And one of them is uh, Danzan, which is spoken in Southern Puebla. And also in, in some parts of Oaxaca, uh, depending on how, how do you want to, uh, to classify this variety. Um, well, uh, there, there are like different numbers about uh, varieties of mixtec, but we say like 81 um, varieties at least of, of mixtec. And then there are and any uh, uh, there are different numbers about, uh, for this uh, macro language. But yeah, so one of them is the Dabi, and well, there are different um, sociolinguistic situations in, in the communities. Uh, some of the places the children are still learning their language and in other places like uh, the community in Puebla, uh, just people uh, above over 60 years old are the native speakers. So it's really hard for uh, for me like doing this all diversity and then in, in, in my community see what's happened there. Uh, well, I started doing my uh, my research because, well, not, not my research, my informal journey, because I was um, my my grandmother. Uh, it's a rememberer, which I like that um, specific label for for that kind of um, speaker, because she she under well she's from other community, well, a different community, uh, but is um, but. He only remembers and can understand everything the other people in the other community say, uh, speaks in mixtec. So I started learning words with her, and then I was like, "Wow, this is amazing!" So why why I'm learning? I don't know because in that time I was learning Nahuatl, which which, which is another language in Mexico, in the in, especially in the center of Mexico, and I was like, so. I want, I want to learn now Mixtec or know more about Mixtec or Dhabi. So that's, that's uh, the moment when I, uh, when, when I start like thinking about my own community and heritage. And then um, I start working with a, a professor in the other community, which who is a friend of my grandmother because my grandmother knows everyone because he's, he's a, well, he, he's an, a seller of a special traditional food in my community, which is enchilada, uh, a tortilla with um, mole, 
<laughs> well, well, this is a specific, a specific, um, um, so a specific food from from my region. So he knows uh, everyone, and he she introduced me introduces introduced me with uh, two different uh, people. So now I started like recording, like that's the the first thing I I did, like record the words and well, I didn't know what. I, I, that was just a feeling like I have to do something, but I haven't, I didn't know um, how to do it. But for me, it's like, yeah, I start recording. And then uh, later I discovered that this is like a document practice, right? But you have to know how to do it well, because you can, uh, after that, you can use this material. So yeah, that's what, that, that, uh, that was the beginning. So how I uh, about how I started my uh, my my journey or, or how I started learning the uh, the Dandavi language, which well Dandavi is an autonym from for mixtech of my region. Okay, uh, that's that's a really interesting start. I mean, uh, it's amazing. You you didn't thought that you are documenting. But in reality, you were documenting and you, you purely started the work because of your passion and for your love of that, your language and for your community. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, uh, hmm. I also would like to add another thing because uh, for this experience, then when I started doing my master's, I, uh, me, another colleague, uh, we started uh, doing, uh, well, um, we edited, 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 yeah, sorry, <laughs> uh, a book about language documentation. And that was uh, like, I feel like, yeah, it's, it's a book for, for uh, Cynthia from the past, because it's like, I would like to have some tools to start recording. Uh, to start um, documenting, but I didn't have that in that that, that in that time. <laughs> so now that's why we we do um, we make that work. Okay. So uh, really amazing that your grandmother remembered the language and uh, you took it from her. You carried on the heritage language and traditions from her. So. Uh, Maybe you can talk, uh, can you share us a bit of view about what, uh, as per your understanding, what is the reason because of which uh, language are, well, the people are not learning? How, how come your grandmother was a rememberer mm -hmm. of the language, but, mm -hmm. but you, uh, you didn't learn it. And then when you realize that it's, it's, uh, you should learn it, then you started learning it. So maybe talk, uh, tell about the pressure or the problem uh, why the languages are not uh, like surviving or or why the young people are not so interested in learning the language yeah well it it's about like i don't know maybe everything like colonialism and how these ideas and ideologies about which language it should be taught or it is it is best because i don't know maybe it's like yeah, it's best for making money. For example, in Mexico, all the people, say, well, all the, well, the society tells you like the, you have to learn English in order to make money. So stop learning indigenous languages or stop learning, like I don't know, uh, other other language, uh, other language like I don't know. But yeah. So that's why, um, and also like Spanish, you know, it's like, oh, it's okay, Spanish, because it's like um, a good language. I don't know what the, the, um, the, um, the suitable word for like uh, Spanish, I don't know, but yeah. So, so when you, for example, my grandmother, and this is like an old story for, and a common story for, for different speakers of native language, of indigenous language, my grandmother was told that not speak, uh, not speak their language that she was having at home because it was, um, it was known, um, I don't know, like no, no, like savage, like not, not civil, no, I don't know the word, like, yeah, like it's a, um, a like, sorry, the, 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 um, 
Okay, so it's so so indigenous language or mixed text is not uh, a good language. It's better to, to learn Spanish, and not uh, because if you learn mixed text, you cannot speak well Spanish. So that's why he doesn't. She doesn't uh, learn the language because it was like a prohibition. But it was a prohibition, um, like um, like an ideolog ideological prohibition, you know, because it was like a. Um, a Mexican state policies uh, for languages like stop uh, stop speaking your native language and um, we have to to teach Spanish to indigenous communities. So that happened there and that happened in uh, in any com community. And I think I, I think this uh, thought still happens and still uh, are in like in 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 people's minds. So that's why that's that's why um, well it's not the fault of our grandparents it's not the fault of our uh, of their grandparents it's like the fault of a uh, national ideology like like that um, like I do, yeah, we are we are one race uh, so yeah so that's why I, I it's it's a really hard um, um, uh, topic because it's like maybe against the state and everything, but it, it has to be um, spoke. It has, it, it has to be like um, ex um, we have to talk about this because it's very important. And because of but because of this ideal ideology, uh, we now we have to to fight. Uh, against them because uh, even though they, it happened like some um, years <laughs> or decades ago it is still in 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 this in this at this time so even maybe children are still saying that no indigenous language is not a good it is i'm not a, a good language so yeah, it's, there is a lot of, I think for language revitalization, we have to do like a work of um, language awareness, like uh, like try to to change this, uh, well not change, or uh, maybe analyze this um, idea and, uh, and fight against them to, to start doing like the other work. Yeah, I, I truly agree. In fact, like as you rightly said, uh, uh, there are not enough institutions which are language inclusive and it makes makes it really difficult for people who speak a, a native or indigenous or heritage language. They cannot be a part of mainstream society or, or, or the, uh, what like everybody is doing. And that's that's when the, uh, the, like the, our native speaker or heritage speaker has to shift to a more like more wider widely sp spoken language like in your case it's spanish or mostly it's uh, other language as well like depending on the region what is the general uh, uh, generally people have aspiration towards some language that they want to learn and then they ha they don't really appreciate their own native language or heritage language in that sense great so uh, was there any specific moment or uh, one very fine day that uh, you decided you no know, from today onwards i'm going to work only on my uh, native heritage language and this is my life school or uh, so was there any such moment because uh, as you said you come from a non linguistic background you were studying literature and then uh, you shifted to purely like linguistic or anthropology and you started documenting like even before you knew you were documenting you uh, you started documenting it and then you realized that the work that you have been doing is actually called language documentation so uh, uh, can you take us through your journey that very fine moment the defining moment or that tipping point in your life that uh, you decided that from now onwards you'll be working to save your, or uh, to promote and reclaim and revitalize your heritage language. Yeah, I I also remember it's a very precious moment for me. Well, it, I was helping my grandmother to make her mole, and um, there is an special salt there in that part of the Mixteca, which is like sal uh, sanuda in Spanish, and I see I thought like. Uh, 
sañudo, sañuda means something in Nahuatl because in Mexican Spanish we have a lot of uh, Nahuatl words in Spanish. So I, I thought like maybe it's a, a Nahuatl word, but I didn't know. Well, I did some research about uh, Shani or Shanyu, and then I discovered that it was in Nahuatl, but mixtec, Shani, and means uh, like roof, like something roof. So it's salt, salt um, roof, so something like that. It's a special kind of, of salt that you use with nopales, which is a cactus from here, and also beans. And for the mole, she he's make he made he make my grandmother makes it. He she also use this kind of salt. So I, so I yeah I I ask my grandmother about it because it's like well can you can you maybe now what? But well, and my my grandmother told me that no, it's mixed egg. And in fact, I remember like it 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 is in in Shani, which is. Uh, salsa uh, no? and I and I was like, wow. So for me, it was like uh, that that moment when I said, like, do you speak mixtec? And she was like, well, I don't speak it, but I understand. Like uh, most everything they say to me, because in the in that part of Puebla, there are different towns. So one is this uh, of my grandmother, the other one where I work, and the other one where my uh, teacher is from. So, where my yeah. So I so I oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, uh, in this in these two last um, towns, uh, San Jerónimo de Ayacatlán and Sayacatlán de Bravo, uh, the people is still speaking uh, mix mix mixtec, as uh, like people like the age of my grandmother still speak mixtec. So I was like, and she is also um, a merchant. Uh, he says her um, her fruit and she she was like uh, the people uh, <laughs> i i love the the stories of my grandmother but the people said what well, like, people was telling uh, speaking uh, between them like oh you know that uh, that lady is very strong because she can uh, she can carry their own uh, fruit and everything uh, but they say that what well, they was say uh, says that was saying that in mixtec, and my grandmother just and she was laughing at and and she said I also understand mixtec, and it was really interesting because it's like she understands everything about the other uh, where people from the other towns are are speaking, and but she can speak like fluently, and it was really uh, uh, from that point uh, we start like. Uh, remember words because uh, when I asked to my grandmother, to my grandmother, what, uh, for example, how 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 can you how do you say that in mixtec? She doesn't remember. But when I said, how do you know what what I don't know what uh, uh, kiwi means? Kiwi means they, and she was oh yeah, it means they. So it's interesting because she cannot uh, ask, she cannot answer me when I uh, when I ask her in Spanish, but she can answer when I ask her in Dandavi. And yeah, I, it's it's really interesting. And now when we talk um, by the phone, she also uh, greet greet to me in in Dandavi and also say goodbye to me in in Dandavi. So it's like a I don't know, like um, um, a recipe. I don't know if that if, if that's a word of English, but like a mutual. Yeah. It's like a mutual learning. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks for teaching that word. Like kiwi means day. Uh, kiwi means day. Kiwi means day. Yeah. yeah. So we learned a new word in a new language. That's amazing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's that's really interesting it means yeah uh, you you don't know when when these moments of uh, uh, realization comes into your life and then you end up working in fact like for me it was when uh, i was back at home for a holiday and i uh, i know my native language and then uh, i realized my cousins couldn't speak it 
uh, and then somehow it, the problem statement really made sense to me and i working i started working on it and one thing led to other and now i'm like working full time as a language conservationist anyway so uh, moving ahead uh, can you also uh, so by the way you look really pretty so can you tell a bit about <laughs> but in my home i have different uh, hats and yeah it's uh, it's like um well there is a lot of things happen happening there because um, for uh, some some indigenous people in mexico and on um, well, indigenous um, indigenous cultures have uh, have their their own um, clothes but for example in that in that part of the mixtec uh, that uh, traditional clothes are not uh, well i don't know what 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 were what were them yeah <laughs> sorry what well, yeah because uh, uh, some most of well, some for some cultures um, colonialism destroys uh, uh, little by little but but uh, for example clothes maybe uh, in in another places people cannot remember who was the last speaker of that language so mm -hmm. yeah it happens so what is but here in, in that part of, of the mistake they use uh, they they still uh, with alm or with palma so yeah it's this is a necklace of, of that and also well the the, the hats are really amazing and they are very useful so because there is a lot uh, a dry place with a lot of cactuses and little wishes so it's a lot of hat there hat yeah <laughs> oh, uh, thank you for telling that uh, can you speak a bit uh, tell us more about your uh, traditional food we talk about clothing but about music and uh, any other art form mm -hmm. Mm, well, tradition, traditional food is like, mm, well, in, in Mexico we have like Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, and it's uh, in different uh, cultures we celebrate uh, different, right? We have different foods, for example, in, in, in my community we, for um, Day of the Dead, we prepare a special kind of soup, which is wash mole uh, which is like a little with i don't know a, a plant well not a plant well yeah a plant uh, which is waje and maybe people from mexico know with uh, what uh, what um, plant is this or what well, there is not a plant it's like a, i don't know the name of english so uh, of that in english but yeah and um, it's uh, we, uh in that part also we eat like I don't know what if well kind of a goat. Uh, uh, so we make this soup with goat on this plant, and you um, offer to to your family who passed away. So this is a special food for day of the dead. But I really like that food. <laughs> so when when I can because when you prepare that with uh, goat. Yeah, goat. Uh, you, uh, it's because it's day of the dead. But when you, well, but if if it's not a like an special day like that, you can use beef to make the same kind of soup. So I usually do that in my in Mexico City where where I was living, because this is really my my favorite uh, plate. And also while well, the uh, also well the the. The enchiladas from my grandmother are like the best. My grandmother is well known in the town for her enchiladas, and people from different uh, communities around our community go go to 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 try and to to buy the enchiladas. So yeah, it's but yeah, it's an and, and mole. Uh, well, in different Mexican, uh, yeah, in different places of Mexico. Uh, mole is prepared with different in ingredients, but here with my grandmother, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know what will be the most representative, but maybe most of the most of the people who said that her grand, their her is or their grand great uh, of, of uh, grandmother 
makes the the best mole. But my grandmother, I think my grandmother makes the best mole in in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's that's true. I mean, uh, even though I'm not tasted it, but I can say that everybody, every grandmothers, they they have this like knowledge which they have accustomed with time, and uh, they have. So obviously the food gonna be really amazing. Uh, meanwhile, I see more people joining in. So hello everyone, uh, welcome to this Insta live session with Cynthia. Uh, thank you for joining in, and we are really excited to have you on board. Uh, uh, Cynthia, can you just look at uh, laid back by, uh, uh, and also for other audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop your questions in the comment box. We'll be taking it very shortly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, moving ahead. Uh, uh, so, I know that in your life you have uh, like done a lot of different kind of things, like uh, being a literature student to starting to record your heritage language, then. Uh, like then spending time with your grandmother then uh, pursuing linguistic now coming to us uh, so I, you have played different roles around your language and culture uh, can you give us a outlook about uh, about the different approaches you have taken like uh, when you were a literature student and then you were like you were, you wanted you were like pursuing to document your language, but you are not linguistically and academically trained. And now that you are academically trained. So um, please take us through your work experience and the different path or different um, actions that you have taken to around your language. Uh, yeah, well, there are like, yeah, different roles that uh, I, I have played. Um, for example, like, um, in the beginning, I was like uh, uh, the people know know me as as like my for my grandmother. Like, oh, you you are the granddaughter of Femia, which is the name of my grandmother. And then I start. Then um, they call me. Ah, you are the um, you are this person. You are this person that are learning mixtech. And then so so I have been uh, called different names. Like yeah, first with my family. Like you are you belong to that family. Then ah, you are doing this work. And um, yeah, that now I'm looking to like well. And this is, I think, this is like a big responsibility. Responsibility because uh, I work with the language of the community, and also like I, I have made a lot of friends working with with the language, mm -hmm. and 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 I don't know, like, but I don't, most of them, well, um, a lot of, um, all of my friends um, are very very good at the at their own work. Like, for example. And uh, the, the teacher who, who the, yeah, the teacher, uh, which I, um, yeah, the teacher, <laughs> sorry, uh, he, he, he has doing a lot of um, learning material, for example, I, I think I show you something of you know, some of this in the, in the morning, in, at the, in, yeah, in the morning, so, yeah, the, the, this is like kind of tales in, in Mistet. Um, uh, but like I don't know when it comes to to start um, teaching the, la the the language, maybe uh, the the children because the the children are the main attendees of, of these um, workshops. Maybe they they are not like very um, I don't know. But the the children are are really like. Um, uh, in a imperative like doing this and doing that and everything. So I think uh, different um, approach needs to be done for uh, for learning uh, in Landabi in the community and for teaching also. So yeah, in this um, for for this I start doing um, different work with this uh, teacher 
and he became my my friend and like my friend and my teacher we we spent a, this, uh, a lot of time speaking about Dandavi and it's interesting because when I uh, when I uh, ask like if, if I have a question about I don't know um, a word in Dandavi he starts like uh, remembering and asks also her family uh, his, his family and then uh, it happens something like a mutual uh, learning about about the language. So yeah. So for example, I have this uh, this connection with with my teacher. And for example, uh, in the in the other in the other community, I just I I I attend. Well, I was uh, like an observer of a mixed mixed class there, and um, it was very interesting because I start. Like just uh, well at, uh, after the class, we I start recording because um, uh, a friend of mine uh, told me like told me I ah, you, you should record this conversation and then I start recording the conversation and later I posted in the Facebook group of the community and a lot of people was like oh that's beautiful you have to still doing that but it was just one conversation. And, and I think it's very very nice um, to see to see this because people like start like um, I don't know like very happy to see their language being recorded recorded. So for me it's like um, different roles. Like for example, being friends with my with um, my teacher and also start being friends with another people um, that I know because we are the same interest. In, in in the mix in Dandavi or learning uh, learning on see how, or see how to teach Dandavi and and I like to to start doing documentation because there, there are a lot of things that for example stories of the town and everything that needs to be uh, well it, yeah it needs to be documented because because sometimes people start forgetting how how they uh, how the, how the things were uh, before in the town for example how the town was uh, um, was established or the, the, the story of of how the two towns were separated because of um, yeah because some conflicts in the in the in the past in the beginning of the past century so they are very interesting um, work uh, stories there um yeah i don't know for me it's like also i'm very part of this of, of this process because i'm not only like a researcher i'm also like a learner and i'm also part of, of the community and the people know who is my family who my family is so <laughs> and but but yeah so it's it's really important to me like like not let my my people down because it's like a big responsibility you know <laughs> yes i mean uh, it's so you wore like a lot of different hats if i can sum it up mm, sorry <laughs> you you wore different hats uh, you have like you you have wear different hats to save your culture uh, and to reclaim your culture that's that's really interesting i mean yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, i i can relate to the part where you said uh, you posted on social media uh, facebook or any other like social media and uh, people really appreciate it so I, I like i agree because we we don't see our language heritage languages being represented or any content being put out on social media so thanks for putting that out and i, I maybe you, what you can do is you can drop a link to your the facebook page or that group so that other people can also uh, learn and uh, like be benefited from that page uh, moving ahead uh, so of all these initiatives that that are taken by you and i assume there uh, other people are also taking action uh, can you uh, which is the most exciting thing like out of all these different hats that you have wear wore 
uh, which is your favorite thing and uh, uh, when you see people getting engaged into language work what really excites you in particular Mm, well, for example, I like like I like see different um, of well people like me like also reclaiming the, the language because I don't know maybe because um well my 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 parents migrated from their community to Mexico City and maybe sometimes Mexico City can be like this uh, big monster that can uh, eat you. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um and it's very important like to to keep your your identity to you know where you are come from um and for me it's really interesting to connect with people with the same uh, interest like mm -hmm. like me um yeah and also for um for example i have met like um, different people and organizations in my masters i i I met, met um, many friends who are working in their own languages with in different approaches because some of them are native speakers of the indigenous language, um, or some of them are like um, like passive speakers that they can understand everything but they cannot speak fluently. Uh, but there are they are younger than than my grandmother, so. There is a different social, social, social linguistic situation in their places, and also, um, well, uh, uh, for example, uh, one organization that I was that I, that I met was Elox, Comunidad Elox, uh, and I really like that kind of um, like communities, like because I think there are different people working for like the same objective. For example, um, I'm I'm a linguist. I'm a linguist, uh, and also there are people from computational linguistics, and also um, in, in engineering by doing I don't know like coding and everything for make a platform for languages and for indigenous languages and language technologies. And working with them was like really nice to see like there are uh, other people that maybe they are no um, they are not uh, part of an indigenous community but they are still interested in working with languages uh, of uh, of indigenous languages of Mexico and I like to see all this enthusiasm. Uh, in different um, places, like mm -hmm. not only in the community, but also outside of them, like in other uh, working places, like, like this. Um, yeah, so this, uh, this journey uh, has, um, has made me feel more, uh, more connected with different people around uh, the world. Even because now you and me, we are, we are talking about our languages. Okay. Uh, uh, so there's a question from, uh, uh, in, I posted in the comment. Can you kindly take that? Yeah, uh, that's a really, really nice question because, well, I think there are many, many ways to, to, do, to do that. For example, I'm, I mean, like, I'm, maybe it's not the same, like, the migration in Mexico City or like the migration here in the USA, uh, it's different because of the of the land uh, of the yeah of the, of the territory. But even though you can you can also I don't know look for your community like people like you maybe if if you are not of the same town of the same pueblo, maybe you are from the same state like Oaxaca for example or Puebla. Or so you can start working with them. Um, I don't know, like you can do different things, like maybe start um, talking about their own experience. Because I think uh, in the morning, <laughs> at the morning, we also were talking about how emotional is to talk, is to to do language revitalization work, because involves uh, a lot of different um, feelings of. For example, I don't know, like recovering, regaining, uh, reclaiming, and maybe uh, different uh, people. Uh, as I as I was uh, telling 
at least people uh, I like to to find people like me who who are in the same journey in, in the same mm, yeah in the same uh in the same mm, with the same ideas so yeah you can uh, you can start st start working with people around you and then also you can do your own work in your community like for example uh Well, there are in some in many communities there are like special work which is uh, with the name uh, is cargos in, in Spanish. <laughs> But on how you can be um, linked to to them, like maybe you can help doing some um, some I don't know like I don't know helping some uh, create some um, street building or festivity there in the community. Yeah, there are like a different things. For example, in in New York, where people from Puebla uh, usually migrate, uh, migrate, um, they start doing um, mixed car carnival, carnival there, and then uh, people from uh, from Mexico, uh, they the 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 visa thing is really hard, but they can. Uh, get uh, they they can get a visa people from Puebla and they can travel to to USA and and start like like doing connections between territories and I think it is really important to maintain this connection. Yeah, uh, that's so true. I mean, uh, you need to. Uh, like there's a common saying you know, which my father father told me that if you stay grounded then you don't have to fear for uh, falling off now, what he meant is uh, you will stay closer to nature and to your uh, land and culture so you'll not feel disconnected yeah, yeah. Uh, right so uh, i'll with that we'll move to the last question for this insta live um which is if you are uh, how do you hope to see uh, the language situation uh in next ten, 20 years not like five years not down the line 10 years but in let's say next 20 years or even beyond that because generally language uh, takes uh, we don't realize it but language is very critical uh, topic and it takes a lot of time it takes generations to see even a smallest bit of change uh, in in the language situation so uh, uh, when you are uh, let's say when when you are dreaming really big uh, what is that bigger picture that you see for uh, mystic languages and all other languages in general uh, indigenous languages in the next 20 years mm, well i the first of all i would like to Mm, I wish there was more learning materials in, like, in all different indigenous languages in Mexico and in the world, and also, like, the like the big dream <laughs> is like the community of speakers uh, growth because I think that's like a, this 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 would be like the <laughs> the the dream goal like this community. Mm -hmm. Grow, growing because uh, and also to make that possible it's important to increase appropriate new spaces of youth like not on, like youth in every part of the community for example at this point uh, you can hear mixed tech uh, uh, in the in the houses with er, er, uh, elderly people but i would like maybe you can use uh, dandavi in the I don't know in the in, in the pol like uh, we we call it in Spanish Palacio Municipal, which is um, some where where you can do paperwork for uh, for the society and everything. So you can you can I don't know um, see your uh, um, your <laughs> sorry like your, the paper that that says where you was born in Mixtec and I don't know. That have different um, uh, yeah places of of use like also like people from from different ages can use the language like from children learning mixed from their parents to your grandparents and 
yeah, uh, this is like, but like this is a dream goal because it's it's hard uh, science in this situ special situation. Uh, as I told you, uh, people from people over sixty years old are the native speakers. But yeah, it's like a like a long term goal because if uh, for me it's uh, now uh, I'm start doing this work about documentation. But also, like, this is not, not a task for, like, I don't know, five, ten years. It's like a task for a, a long life um, task. So I would like, like, other people start working because for me, it's like the more people uh, working uh, at the same time, uh, we can do, like, a big project. So that, that would be, like, my, my dream. Yes, yeah, and okay. also for me, like learning fluently, I mean speaking fluently the, the language, will be very will, will be my personal goal. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I, you very rightly said it. Like uh, we need to work together, and uh, a topic like language cannot be a problem of just one person. Everybody uh, language is for every human, not just a community or not just for a country or uh, location a set of people but it's for everyone and then uh, that's why we need everybody must come together and work toward language conservation and revitalization oh okay. yeah thank exactly. you for that lovely message i mean it's really inspiring and it's really motivating and i hope that audience whoever will like all the audience who are present over here and then will be seeing it later uh, will be inspired and motivated to uh, contribute their part of duty or the, their part of responsibility toward language conservation. Okay, uh, so moving to the next part of this talk, uh, we'll have a quick rapid round, a rap rapid question and answer round. Uh, I call it 13 reasons why and I'll be asking you 13 questions um, you can, you just simply have to, uh, like, very, be very quick, tell us the first thing that comes into your mind. Uh, before we start, uh, one last time, if there are any questions in, from the audience, please feel free to comment, uh, comment your, your questions, drop your questions in the comment, uh, in the chat, and we'll be taking it up. So, yes, uh, let's start with the first question. Uh, my first question would be, if not linguist, then oh, then what? What would you be doing? Um, I think I would like to be like um, a musician, like playing the clarinet for for yeah for like the band in in the town for uh, yeah musician clarinet musician. <laughs> it will it has to be very quickly, right? Yeah. Uh, difference between studying in Mexico and US. Mm, food. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next question is the last book that you read. Mm, the last book. It was like um, field work. How to work with with tone in field work. Okay. Uh, are you a morning person or a night person? Uh, I think I can do both. Um, I like to wake up early, but I also. Uh, most of the time, I I also can go to bed really late. <laughs> uh, what were your childhood dreams? Mm, um, I don't know. Maybe mm, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, like um, learning to swim because I I don't know uh, back then how to swim. Okay. Okay. What is something that you learned but don't want us to learn? Mm, maybe the pain when someone special for you passed away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, something you are grateful for? Uh, grateful? Mm -hmm. Grateful. You, you thank the universe, mm -hmm. the God, the supernatural. Yeah, I said like my grand my grandmothers like from the father side and as well as from the mother side my grandmother has been like the most important person so that's why i'm so grateful for for them 
Oh, so you're grateful that you have your grandmother and you get to learn a lot of uh, new things from her about your heritage, language, and culture. That's so amazing. Now, uh, okay, one one superpower wish. Um, um, I don't know. Maybe I would like to to fly because it's very like I I also I. Most of the times, I dream that I can fly, so I would like to experience that in real life. Okay. Do you have any favorite book? Um, favorite book? Um, yeah. Well, I um, Pedro Paramo, which is a um, a novel from a Mexican author. So okay. Pedro Paramo. Any um, any favorite song? Uh, well, not like a, not like a, like a song, but like maybe music for dancing, which is cumbia, okay. <laughs> cumbia from different places in Mexico and Colombia and uh, Latin Latin America, Latin America. Okay. Um, given a time machine, one dead language or culture you would want to revive. Also, my. Oh. <laughs> Obviously, my sorry for being maybe so selfish, but my heritage language, which is Dandavi, and I would like to uh, not to the um, trans, um, trans transmission intergen intergenerational transmission stops. I would like to that continues forever uh, for me and for my grand. For my children, for my grandchildren, I would like. I will. That's what I would like to do. That's nice. As you are pursuing PhD, uh, what is your uh, core value for research? Um. Um. Well, I don't know. I think I like. Um. I think uh, working with people is very important and for me like i'm working with languages but not only languages when we work with language we work with people and community so that's why i think uh, meeting people and talk to people it's very important okay uh, what is your view on language death mm, well <laughs> i don't know it's mm, terrific there yeah language that most of the time there are not natural language that there are uh, there are specific um, situations that cause language that mm -hmm. what is your view on climate change mm, language change no, climate change climate ah, climate change well it's part of everything like colonialism capitalism everything okay. like it's a, i mean it's a consequence of that yeah mm -hmm. okay so moving to the uh, like the last question for this uh, rapid power ra round uh, share your experience learning clement like the musical instrument that you were learning how was your experience and uh, uh, maybe just tell a bit about why everybody should learn the native uh, the instrument from your region Mm, the instrument, like the Clement, uh, the clarinet. Yes, clarinet. Well, I don't know. Well, in Mexico, in southern Mexico, well, I think in different places of Mexico, no southern, but in the um, in the in the towns, uh, we um, we have bands, special bands that play for special occasions, like. Uh, weddings, about um, baptisms and festivities for the town, and I think being a musician there, it's like a lot of experience. Like you have to to be in the important events in the at the community at the, at the community. So I think it's very very interesting. So I that that was I start learning clarinet because I was. Uh, I wanted to, to play uh, songs of the community and also songs of like in different, um, like, I don't know, like from the region of Oaxaca especially. But then <laughs> um, I, I, I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't continue 
because I have to do a lot of things. And then uh, I, uh, what I, what I did is to give uh, my clarinet to the band of the town. So other person now is playing the clarinet there. So yeah, I think that's a good ending for, for my clarinet. That's nice. That's, that's nice to hear. Okay, uh, on that note, we officially end uh, the Insta Live session. Thank you everyone for joining in. And uh, it's been amazing to hear your story. Uh, I'm, sh I'm, I'm personally, I'm really motivated uh, to continue the work that I'm doing. And I'm really glad that uh, to learn about you and your journey and uh, also learn about you know, my community and the similarities uh, that are there between uh, Mystic and Mundari community. Uh, so once again, yes. thank you everyone for joining in. It's really amazing. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach us out in uh, in our respective, like uh, you can uh, if chats, you can reach us out. Always happy to talk and learn about your language community and share about our community. Okay, on that yes. note, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.